Joining us first on CNBC, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella. Uh, Satya, great to have you. Thanks for being with us. It's great to be with you, John. Thank you for having me. Uh, so this is a big deal, particularly in Microsoft's traditional approach to developers. Tell me, I mean, you, you don't buy GitHub to make a lot of money. So lay out, if you, if you will, the strategic benefit of GitHub for Microsoft. How closely do you have to tie it in to things like Azure and where do you keep it arm's length in, in order to try to maintain that sort of open source neutral rapport with the developer community? Yeah, but the first thing, John, is when you think about what's happening in the broader world, every business is a software business, it's a digital business, whether it's precision medicine or precision agriculture, personalized education or personalized banking, is being built by developers. In fact, there's a piece of data from LinkedIn which says that non-tech hiring of software development is growing steadily at double digit, 25% greater than software engineer growth in tech. So that speaks to the world that's going to be there going forward. From a secular basis, developers are going to be required everywhere. It's kind of like what maybe in the early 90s was to equip knowledge workers with tools and services, or what it was even in the 2000s to build SaaS services for sales professionals. Developer SaaS is going to be at the center of uh, the digital economy, and that's the real strategic rationale for it. It's a secular growth market, and Microsoft has heritage here. We were a developer tools company first, uh, and now, of course, we are all in on open source, and that's what really brings us together with GitHub, uh, and we're going to operate it as an open platform uh, for any language, any framework, any platform, whether it's the cloud or on the client, and really serve the developers with a SaaS service that everyone requires, just like we do for knowledge workers with Office 365 or business applications with Dynamics. Right, so Satya, how, how quickly are you guys, as Microsoft and the leadership that you're putting in place, going to be able to make visible changes to GitHub, improvements that might uh, bolster developers' confidence in what you're going to do with the platform? Because rivals, including GitLab, are already trying to take advantage of this acquisition and get developers to export their projects from GitHub into GitLab, uh, their tool that shows those imports is down, is getting so much traffic. How, how quickly are you going to be able to show how Microsoft is going to run this in a way that's going to perhaps make developers happy? Yeah, no, I mean, it's the most important thing with the community uh, asset like GitHub is to stay true to the core ethos of developer first uh, that GitHub has always had. Uh, Nat Friedman, who's going to be the CEO post-close, came to Microsoft from Xamarin. He's uh, someone who's a veteran of open source, and he's going to lead the company. Chris, who is the CEO of uh, GitHub, and I uh, discussed a lot about the fundamental ethos of the company going forward will remain the same. Uh, we'll operate it independently. It'll be an open platform. And uh, I think most developers out there will judge us by our recent actions and our actions going forward. And we will have to earn the trust every day. And so we are very, very committed to it. Uh, but we are excited uh, because I think at the core, Microsoft is a developer and a tools company. And this is just something that comes very naturally to us. Uh, and quite frankly, earning the trust of our customers uh, by our actions every day is what we live by. Now, you said that GitHub is going to operate independently, but in terms of pricing and the approach to the developer, how many times should we expect to see between GitHub and Azure, or between uh, GitHub and Visual Studio type tools, and, and, and how soon? I mean, in fact, in Already there is some amazing integrations uh, between our tools. VS Code, for example, which is one of the most popular editors today, is built as an open source tool on GitHub. Uh, we have fantastic integration there. We already have many Azure services integration. In fact, just last couple of weeks ago at Build, our developer conference, we showed a lot of the integration of the workflows uh, between Azure and GitHub. But the most important thing though is, it's not just about Azure. We welcome every uh, cloud provider to integrate to GitHub in order to be able to reach the GitHub community and audience and give GitHub members the choice uh, of any cloud as well as any client mobile platform or IoT platform. So to us, 
Uh, you'll see us continuously integrate, but again, stay true to what is the core ethos and value proposition of uh, GitHub. Satya, I wanted to, to switch uh, focus, if I may. There was a New York Times uh, investigation over the weekend uh, that suggested uh, Facebook shared data with all sorts of device makers before Facebook was in a position to launch its own app-based uh, software programs, and uh, Microsoft was listed uh, in that uh, investigation. Did you get data, personal data, of Facebook users? What did you do with it, and, and do you still have that data now? Uh, I actually am not very familiar with the issue. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not, I'll have to sort of get back to you on that, but I'm not, you know, overall for us at Microsoft, our focus has always been that it's not about our data, it's our customer's data, whether it's the consumer side or it's the organizational or enterprise side. We are just custodians of data and we work, you keep the data secure and use the data with permission from users. That's been our core principle. That's how it's the core tenant of what we do with our cloud services and our client platforms. Would you therefore, like perhaps Tim Cook did a, a few weeks back, try and differentiate yourself uh, from the likes of Facebook uh, and suggest that whilst others might use data from customers for monetization purposes, that that's something that, that Microsoft has never done? Yeah, I mean, I, the thing is, I, you know, for me, one of the things which I find strange about tech company CEOs being asked about other tech companies is what, you know, it's just not relevant to me. What I want to stay true to is what is it that we, Microsoft, are in business for and how do we make progress and live up to the promise to our customers. Trust is everything for us, whether it is our cloud services, our tools, our client platforms, and to that point, absolutely will differentiate on that point of view. And other companies may have different business models and different value propositions, and they'll have to make their own choices. And Satya, finally, on M&A, this is a sizable uh, purchase. Any more on the horizon? Should we expect you to slow down for a while to integrate this? The market seems to welcome it. Your stock is up on this news. Overall, John, I would say uh, we always look for what are growth opportunities. So in other words, if there is a secular market uh, segment that is going to grow, we'll always be attracted to that. But more importantly, we need to have a real position that we can contribute something unique to that market. In this case, being a developer-first company from the very start gives us confidence that we can bring real value to the developer community. And lastly, you have to be able to integrate and operate. Uh, what we have done with Minecraft, what we have done with LinkedIn gives us confidence that we can in fact acquire, grow, and have these communities thrive. And that's what will basically be things we'll look for. Uh, it's not that we have speeded up or slowed down, but we'll go by those three criteria. Is it a growing market? Can we add value? And can we integrate it well? Sounds like perhaps you got room for more. Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, thanks for joining us first on CNBC. Thank you so much, John. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.